Hello everyone, my name is Grace and I'm going to be talking about pecan and HH prey. So to get started, let's get some background information on pecan. Pecan is basically an easy compilation of all the databases talked about in the other videos you've watched. It functions as a shared notes taking website for all the annotations that people have made individually. It's similar to a Google Doc or Google Slide where people make notes on pecan, save their work, and then it'll show it for everyone else that has access to pecan. So first we're going to show you how to select the phage that you will be working on. So you're going to go to this phage box, type in the phage that you want to look at, sob, and then once it pulls up, it might take a minute, collect this, select the phage you want to look at, which is sob. You've now selected the phage that you want to look at. After you select this phage, you're going to want to switch tabs within Pecan to view the page titled Genes, which is to the left top of the screen. Now that you've gotten to the gene page, you're going to want to select the gene you're going to be working with. So as shown here, this is all the information for gene 1, but we want to look at gene 14, the tape measure protein gene. So once I click that, Glimmer is showing the start at 9504 base pairs, and GeneWork is calling the start at 9504 base pairs. Right here, the FAM starter rater, you can click this link, and it will take you to the starter rater report. To the left top of the screen, you see host train gene mark, which you can also click, and it will show you the coding potential for gene 14. As you scroll down, you can see the list of all the different potential start calls with all their information. Since 9504 base pairs was the start called by both Glimmer and GeneMark, we have selected this gene. Each of these different columns shows different information for each start. So this shows the forward or reverse, in our case it's forward, the start, the stop, the length, the gap, a negative indicates an overlap, in this case it would be an overlap of 4, a positive indicates a gap, in this case it's a gap of 17. This column shows the z-score, the finer score, and then L-O-R-F stands for longest open reading frame. In this case, the gene that we have selected, which start 9504, does not have the longest open reading frame. We also see in this column the start codon, and if it has coding potential, and whether or not we've selected this gene. Since the gene that is selected is the gene with the check mark, this means that all the information on the rest of the page is based off using this gene. If you disagree with the selected start or need to compare two different sets of information for starts, you can reselect a different gene to rerun the coming information. However, it's very important to not Click Save because, like I mentioned, changing and saving on Pecan edits the entire website for everyone using Pecan. Also, when you're finished looking at the information, change the selected gene back to what it was before. Down below the list of gene calls, you'll see a section for Notes in Sydney. While you're all not going to be editing this page, this does demonstrate the need to justify the calls that you've made, which you'll be doing on the Google Sheets form that you're going to be filling out. Below this section, you're going to see Phages DB Blast, and if you scroll down, HH Pred, scroll down some more, and NCBI Blast. Each of these have different information columns. So Phages DB has the name, the protein number, the function, the sequence length, the score, the E value, the cluster, and the FAM. If you click on this link, FAM, it's going to take you to the FAM view. Going back to HHPRED, you have the description, the hit, the probability, the percent coverage, and the e-value. Clicking on this hit link is going to take you to the protein data bank. Going back to Pecan, you scroll down a little bit further and you get to NCBI Blast, which gives you the region, creation date, notes, description, percent identity, percent align, percent coverage, and the e-value, you can take this a session and click on that link and it will take you to NCBI. So now let's talk a little bit more in depth about HHPRED. So going back up to HHPRED, let's get a little background information. So basically HHPRED is another database used to compare similar genes. It compares genes in the same family with the gene being annotated. The function of each gene being compared is listed on the main page of Pecan under HHPRED.
When a gene on the HH pred section has a function that is the same as the function called for the gene being annotated, it can be considered evidence for the called gene function of the annotated gene. When a function matches, you can look at the E value listed to determine how good of a match the gene being used to compare it is to the gene being annotated, which the E value is shown to the right of the table. The lower the E value, the better. So HH pred can sometimes be a little difficult and sometimes not have a good match, and that's perfectly okay. You just have to make sure to use something as your evidence. And then mark it in your notes section as not being helpful. This makes sure to notify people checking your work that you did in fact consider everything in your annotations. That's all we have for you today, guys. Thanks for watching.